hearing the spirit of God or hearing his voice. Well, what does that mean? You can hear the voice of God. You actually can hear the voice of God. You can hear his audible voice. You hear him in your thoughts. Jesus heard his father's voice in his head. It was a thought that he heard. And then when Jesus heard that thought, he would either speak that thought or do that thought. He says in scripture that he only does what his father tells him to do. And since he died and rose again, now we have the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit to, to guide us. We're not left as orphans here. We actually have three geniuses with us all of the time. And I can't, decades I've spent without even considering to acknowledge that. But now I've noticed that that I remember it was uh, about 14 years ago. Yeah, 14 years ago when I first met my husband, Jeff, now. And I remember when he, he brought me into, he, he was uh, one of the co-owners of a business and he brought me in the business and I'm walking around the building. And I'm like, oh, you're not gonna be here long. And he's like, what do, what do you mean? You know, it's my business. And I, and I looked at him like, oh, you don't, you don't know? Because I knew there was, something that I knew that that business wasn't going to last and it didn't. There are other extreme examples when I know that I've heard the voice of God because it, it couldn't be anything other than that. And I was guided and I was given hope, but I was also given warning. Have you ever had a warning like, don't do that? Don't go there. Maybe you shouldn't be friends with that person and intuition, if you will. I have a lot of crazy dreams. I mean, and it, they'll go in spurts, it seems. Not every single night I have crazy dreams, but I have some dreams that are absolutely, undeniably, and I'm gonna say it, prophetic. And in a way that gave me so much hope, but some of them also told me that that day was going to be a very, 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 very bad day. And I hated that because it seemed like I couldn't do anything about it. And I probably could have. Now, you know, I'm more mature in the spirit. I, I would have a dream like that possibly and know how to go to the Lord. Maybe I couldn't stop the day from happening, but it's, it's not about stopping troubles from happening. It's about trusting our father that he's going to go with us through the trouble. So I know I'm kind of deviating from hearing the voice of God, but I'm really not because we have an Abba and a daddy who love us. Who, who, it's not like he wants life to be an Easter egg hunt, right? And you know, you have to go you know, look under the cupboard, you know, or go, go look under a rock to find the answers. I think they're a lot easier to hear than we think, but we're so overwhelmed with life, with, information there's so much information uh, and it, it gets so difficult to even to make a decision that's why i think i don't think i know it is imperative for us to be quiet with him to be still especially in the morning to read his word or hear his word however you you choose to go look for his word, but in the morning to be with him face to face. Anyway, I remember when the, I started this company, I am KBD as in the great I am is kind of a big deal and he thinks you are too. And that was four years ago now with um, working with a garment factory that's in India. I met a guy um, when I was working with Reed Saunders, I met this guy in Myanmar and an amazing man of God, his name is Sonny. And he had a garment factory that rescued women from the streets, from severe poverty, from widowhood, the orphans, um, sex trafficking, got him in and taught him to sew, taught him English, but most importantly taught him about their identity in Christ. And it's a legit garment factory. He did remarkable things. I thought, I thought of this thing 
I am KBD. What, people can walk around saying I am kind of a big deal. And I love that idea because people think so little of themselves. If, even if they think, even if they do have some sort of a, a pride issue, they really don't know how big of a deal they are. Because if you understand the significance that <laughs> God bankrupted heaven for you, just you and me, but still he did it for you. And, and if you think that he gave his only son to pay the price for all of your sin because God wanted to spend eternity with you in heaven. He wanted to give you an out from this insane world and worse, eternity in hell. He does not want any of us to burn. He sent his son as propitiation for us. And that's mind blowing. That word is the most powerful, wonderful word in all the evers of evers, I think, outside of the name Jesus. Anyway, so God who gave us his son, why would he not then give us all things? The ability to hear him is kind of a big deal. It's essential. And knowing how to live this life, the choices that we make, um, the people that we choose in our lives, um, how we take care of ourselves, what we wear. I mean, we can talk to him. And, do, and I say this over and over again, 34,000 decisions a day that we're making without him is nuts. And it might get you somewhere, but nowhere near what it can get you if you're listening for his voice. You're being still with him. Read scripture so much so that when you do hear his voice, you recognize it. I've been on a crazy journey since that, the beginning of I Am KBD. I have a nonprofit called You Are KBD, as in you are kind of a big deal. My whole, my whole objective is that you realize that your life has a great value. Great value. From the moment you were knit in your mama's womb, there's a great plan for you. There was a discussion in the heavenlies made regarding you and who you are and how you were made. And no matter what the scenario is, born deformed, born into poverty, born into the jungle, doesn't matter. Everyone's life has great value. And the thing is, why would he make something so ridiculously valuable and then leave? Leave you like, figure it out. He didn't. We're ignoring him. We're not listening to him. We're not pursuing him or seeking him. But there's a few of us that are. And when you meet those people, you know that spend time with them, they're different. They're making different choices. They're not afraid. They're not angry. They don't hard, have hardly any opinions because they're just a piece. They don't, you can feel that they're not judging you. No judgment. That's a tough one. It's a tough one. Can you imagine not having an opinion? Anyway. There are those out there that are listening to him. And what we're doing is we're wanting more and more of us to be listening to him because what a different world that would be. You're not going to be overwhelmed with unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy. You're not going to be depressed. You're not going to be addicted. You're not going to need any of that. You're going to have the joy of the Lord will be your strength. And once you start doing that a little bit, you're going to want to do it a little bit more and then a little bit more. Then all of a sudden your default, which is another one of my more favorite words, your default is going to be still walking in a procession behind our victorious father that whatever we're doing we don't have to worry about the bad things that are happening they're not going to shake us it's more like huh i wonder i wonder what god has to say about this and what he's going to say to you is you don't have anything to worry about i got this just do what i tell you to do listen trust and obey and i'm going to take care of it why because god says you're kind of a big deal. All right, go listen to the voice of God. Tell me what he tells you. Love you, bye.